All right, guys, kind of upset. Um, we have um, we have had something happen where I uh, basically have gotten screwed. I was given a chase. I, I sharpened a knife for a guy here a while back, um, and it's not the individual in question. It was not a customer. I sharpened an Ator knife, a Jungle King 2, I believe was what it was, and I, and I liked it. I liked it a lot, and uh, it, it brought me back to the the old days where you had the the Rambo knives, because the Ator knife that I did was a Jungle King 2, like this, and it's a survival knife. It's got the compass and the end cap, and, and all the things that you would would want and you're expecting in in like one of the rambo style knives problem is I got a chance to get one used and now i can't get a hold of the seller um because i got screwed because this is not an actual a tour this is a fucking knockoff so i got screwed by a knockoff um the uh issue is I can't get a hold of the vendor or the, the the seller it was a direct sale someone reached out to me um, I don't know whether they found me on YouTube or Instagram or what and offered me the choice to buy it and I jumped on it because I really liked the one I did now as far as knockoffs go it's not horrible but it has some issues. I had to fix the pin on it. Um, I'm stuck with it now. I paid for it. Uh, I got it. Um, it's obvious that somebody else had sharpened it. It's fairly, fairly well sharpened. It's not great. But since I got ripped off, um, we're gonna try and see if I can't show you what drew me to this. And this is pretty, pretty well close to um, what I had what I had in my hand um, I don't know about the steel um, but there's no markings on it the one that I sharpened had Jungle King 2 on it now I'll post you the picture that I was sent um, of the knife when I ordered it um, handles pretty close the the issue I have with it the thing that makes me mad is that it is branded as an Ator now there's a good po there's a possibility that this guy is finally gonna respond to me I just got this yesterday. This is, today was the first I'd gotten a chance to look at it because I just got home here a little bit ago. It, um, it's possible that the guy didn't know that it was a fake. Um, it's, it's a possibility. But it's it just sucks that these are even out there. Um, now there's some issues with the grind and things like that. You can see it wasn't ground exactly right these go for about 150 bucks I was given the chance to buy a used one at about $60 still not a bad deal these are the real ones are really nice what drew me to it was the fact that on top of the kit that's in the pot in the in the handle it's more of a survival system and the one that I saw it was really well done and the sheath on this one is pretty close so what you get with it is you don't just get the stuff that's in there you get it's wrapped all the way up here with all this spare 550 cord so you got paracord inside the handle is a another little knife and this actually says on it has got <laughs> stainless steel USA custom designs but it comes with another little knife inside the sheath just right down in here that you can just grab a hold of it and pull it up out and you have a little skinning knife uh it's got a little hook on it you can turn it into a spear for spear fishing it has now on the other one this was much much shinier and uh could be used as a uh what do you call it as a signal mirror um but there's plenty of steel in here and then inside this little pouch are two little surgical tubes that come out and so that you guys can see, this is this is actually really cool. 
on, on the real deal, this pops up, those attach, and it turns this into a slingshot. Um, so in not just only do you have the knife and the sheath and all the other stuff that's inside the handle, there's a smaller knife uh, that could be used as a smaller utility knife, or like I said, uh, attached to something as a spear. Um, looks as though this is jimped um, as a way that you could use it as a um, wrench, bottle opener on one end, it's got a gut hook on it, on this little Skinner, but it's a fake. So here's the thing. I'm debating, I'm, I'm gonna look and see and see if I can, I'll sharpen it and see how it holds an edge. And But I'm just, I'm really, really disappointed in my purchase. And like I said, if the guy gets back in touch with me, guy, girl, whoever it is, I'm not sure, and, and lets me know, like, hey, man, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was a fake. I can kind of understand that. Um, it's not everybody looks at knives as critically as I do. I mean, you guys know, you guys that are my followers know, I'm pretty critical about um, how I look at knives and things like that. Um, but, yeah, it... It sucks. It even happens to me sometimes, these, these knockoffs and ripoffs that happen. Um, but, it's something I can beat on. It's something I can have around to beat on if I want. But that's, that's one of the things that I really thought was cool about the one that I sharpened was it's an entire survival system. Um, and I, there's military branches. I mean, this sheath even has the ATOR mark on it, the, the sheath, the lashings and the, and the clips are the same. It's just, it's not the real deal. I do like um, the real ATOR and well, even this one too, how it locks. So you have that goes over and then it's like a little buckle system as opposed to, um, as opposed to being able to actually do that, uh, as opposed to a snap, you know what I mean? It's. A little quieter, it's not Velcro. So that just sucks. I don't I don't like I don't like fakes or counterfeits to begin with. If it was if it was marked differently, I, I would be a lot more inclined to be happier with it. Um it's still not a bad price. It's not a bad knife um what for what I paid for it. Um but the fact is I got rid of a couple things to to make room for it and I am now upset that I don't have what I actually ordered um so another topic um you guys do know that I sharpen knives uh for Fair and Forge Knife Works um they uh they offer my sharpening service as a pre-order option so with that being said I wanted to make sure that I touched base with some of you guys that have sent me things and paid express fees for when I was busy the only thing that will ever top um, paying the express fee for you guys, the only time that even if you paid the express fee you're going to have to wait is if Ferrum Forge um, or Robert Bodiger Custom Knives have knives that they've sent to me and they're on my bench. Those knives always have to take priority first because they have a timeline that they have to keep for their business. So just wanted to throw that out there. And the other one was I just before I got before I walked in to get a hold of uh, starting this video and locking this video down um, I wanted I got a, 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 a comment asking if I could sharpen a cold steel O Tanto that had come in that the guy was not happy with how it was sharpened and so I haven't really looked into it yet I am definitely going to um, I'm definitely going to look at any pictures he sends me, sends me because it's a, like a 15 inch blade. Now, I have sharpened things that large. It's, it's every bit is, it, it's no different than when I did that at uh, JJ Martinez. Um, great big folding knife with uh, like a 12 inch blade. The thing was massive. But what I wanted to say is um, the way that traditionally Japanese knives are done is they are done with a um, a full convex all the way down 
and you don't actually sharpen those. There's no secondary bevel. They don't have a bevel at the edge that I would be able to sharpen without ruining the, ge ruining the geometry, the traditional geometry of the knife. I do, however, know a guy that can get you where you need to go with that. There are people here in the States that do um, what's called hybrid polish, um, which they have the tools and they, they don't necessarily use the expensive, expensive stones to get to a point where it's they've uh, adjusted the geometry of that. Um, they use sandpaper and some specific tools. Um, I actually had stones for doing the apple seed grind. Uh, I don't anymore. I, I can't. It hurts my back. It hurts my hands. It takes forever. So I cannot do a traditional Japanese sword or a traditional Japanese tanto that does not have a secondary bevel, a secondary up where it comes up and then you just would sharpen that edge. You would really screw up. I've seen a lot of people really screw up some nice, nice um, swords trying to do it that way. Uh, but like I said, if you send me pictures, just text me a picture of it and I can look at it and tell you whether it's traditional or not. And if not, I can point you in the direction of a guy that did one of my swords here a while back um, and I got a hold of him through another company. So uh, that being said, yeah, by all means send me a picture of it and let you know if it's a yes or no. And it might not be a, a no, no, it might just be a no, we don't have you know I can't do it we'll have to get you in touch with someone else um, so no that's basically it um, I was gonna do some sharpening I was gonna touch up this kiridashi but I just realized that my stones have been out of the water for a couple days um, because I haven't anything come in and they needed to dry out a little bit and so I'm not going to be doing that I will be doing a live video on YouTube since now that's an option um, if you guys want to Send me some comments about what you want me to do for my live video. I could maybe do a live feed of me doing some grinding up at Chris and Elliot's on some of my knives. I could maybe do a sharpening video. It's up to you guys. You guys let me know. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it, guys. I just want to do that video. It's nothing special. I've got something in my pocket that I can't show you guys. You can hear it. You want to hear it? When I get the go-ahead that it has um, been announced, I will show you guys. But right now I've got a plaything right in my pocket that's that's kind of secret. But anyway, um, Elliot is probably going to do a video about my uh, sharpening service stuff. Um, I talked to him the other day, and he goes, "Yeah, we need to do that. Um, it would probably boost my probably boost my recognizability and, and some of my numbers." But yeah, no guys, that's it. Um, I'm gonna go in and start getting some stuff put together for, for supper for my wife and kid when they get back from ice skating. All right guys, like I said, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the fact that you guys sit and, and watch watch me ramble. Uh, yeah, no, that's basically, that's it for today. I will see you guys next time. I will get something put together. Like I said, let me know what you want in the live video and I will put an announcement out on my Instagram channel as to when it's gonna be. So I did change my Instagram handle to the Emler Edge. It's no longer Gun Monkey 1974 strictly because if, if you Google search the Emler Edge, there's one thing that pops up. It's the Emler Edge and it's Elliot's write up about my sharpening on their webpage. So, all right guys, take it easy. I'll talk to you later. See you next time.